Tell you what, we need to talk to somebody who has been around the block in terms of politics and policy and broadcasting. It's our good friend Michael Reagan. He can be found on Twitter where he uses the handle at Reagan World. Michael, welcome back to America's Forum. That's good to be with you, J.D. Merry Christmas to everybody. And Merry Christmas to you too, Michael. Now, from the vantage point of Reagan World and world affairs, what do you make of Josh Ernest saying he wouldn't rule out a visit from Mr. Castro to the U.S., maybe even a visit from President Obama down to Havana? Yeah, I, I think there, there's a lot of trouble with what was done the other day with the President of the United States. And I think there'll be a lot of trouble with inviting the Castros to visit the White House, come to the United States to visit with the President and have a cup of coffee there in the blue room or the red room, whichever room he wants to have coffee in. But on the other side of it, and also I believe that Marco Rubio is right. I mean, we have the worst negotiator on the planet sitting at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But on the other side of the equation, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I think for so many years, the only reason that the embargo has been up for so many years is because of Florida, because of the Cuban population in Florida and the importance of Florida in the presidential uh, elections. So I think it's been there a long time, not because we want to punish Cuba so much, but what we want to do is placate and make the Cubans that live in Florida vote correctly on election days uh, every four years. And so I'm surprised it's kind of lasted this long. And, and of course, the Raul and, 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 and the rest of the gang there in Cuba has, have been able to point a finger at the United States and blame us for everybody living in the 50s there in Cuba. So I, have, I don't have that much of a problem with what the president has done. But I do have a problem with with much of the negotiation that all we got out of it basically was rum and cigars. But then, as you know, Congress has always been able to get rum and cigars from Cuba. So do you think Congress will actually lift that embargo? No, I don't think I don't think they'll lift the embargo because I think it is. I think it is in the game of politics. I think that everybody's going to fight. Everybody fights for Florida. They're worried about Florida in the next election. And neither party wants to go on record as, in, unless it's a huge bipartisanship uh, on, re, on taking down the embargo that is around Cuba at this point in time. Uh, but it's only going to have to be a, a bipartisan agreement to take down the embargo against Cuba. But the Michael, one party do you think do they it. should? Do you think they should, though? Yeah, I don't. I at this point in time, Cuba can get everything it wants from all its other neighbors, all its other friends, all its other families around the world. The embargoes don't work really that well, and so after 50 years, I think you know you can take it down because I think I, I get tired of us being blamed for everything. I think when you open the door, there are great possibilities. When you can get the internet in there, when you can get things done, there probably is a good possibility. And let's be honest, I don't think that that uh, regime's going to live that much longer anyway, and they're going to have to change some things, and maybe it's a time for us to start relaxing that and moving forward. As I said, it's become a political issue more than an embargo issue. And, and, and mindful of that, Michael, i just got to ask you, you talked about the political calculus. With the minute that remains, I'm just curious, did your dad, in running for president, ever express frustration about that embargo, saying he had to go to Florida and stand with the anti-Castro exiles? Or is this just your personal observation from the here and now? No, that's really my personal observation. My dad and I never really had that conversation. But I've had that conversation with a lot of people in Florida and, and other people you know, over the many, many years that I've been around it on the planet. Uh, and, and I think it's... it's I think it has a lot of you know, stamina behind it. The, the fact that you you do have this 50-year embargo, what's changed? Nothing's changed. If, in fact, Cuba again goes, you know, like what they did with Grenada, then there's something you're going to have to do. Maybe the best way to take care of this whole thing with Cuba is if you're going to relax the embargo, if you're going to allow things to happen that haven't been happening for years, then you have to trust but verify. And that's where you have to worry about this administration because they trust everybody and verify nothing. Well, the words of your dad, trust but verify, very important. And when we come back, Michael Reagan, a nostalgic view of your dad and the reason he got into politics in the first place. That's coming up. We are so pleased to be rejoined by Ronald Reagan's son, Michael Reagan, in the here and now.
The Twitter page of Michael Reagan can be found at Reagan World. That's at Reagan World. Now, Michael, in a recent column for Newsmax.com, uh, I just am very curious. You draw a comparison in reference to the Sony hack, and you say that Kim Jong Un isn't the only strong man to threaten Hollywood and win. Take us back to your dad and what happened to him. Well, you know, back in the 1950s, late 50s, and of course early 60s, my father was doing that television show, General Electric Theater. And he was going around the country speaking at all the General Electric plants. And he was speaking about big government. He was talking about individual uh, responsibility and, and what have you. And speaking about that government in Washington, which happened to be the John F. Kennedy presidency of the 1960s. And lo and behold, the the Attorney General of the United States, Bobby Kennedy, uh, picks up the phone. He calls the chairman of General Electric. And he says to the chairman of GE, he says, you know, your, your government contracts are coming up for renewal. And, of course, the chairman of GE is trying to figure out why is the Attorney General of the United States calling. And it came, became very clear. And what became very clear is if you want your contracts to be renewed by the government, uh, you're going to have to get rid of that host of that television show, General Electric Theater, that you've got. And within 72 hours of that phone call, my father was fired from his hosting job on General Electric Theater. And in fact, GE Theater was canceled. And so there's your strong arm. So this is nothing new. Uh, this is how my father ultimately got into politics. He was very upset with the Kennedys, didn't have a job, ended up doing a show for Borax. Uh, but then again, he had more time to work on his speeches and to speak. And then 50 years ago, this last October 27th, he gave that speech you, uh, that everybody talked about back then, the time for choosing, which launched his political career. So you got to watch out what you're going to do sometimes because it will come back and bite you. And uh, Ronald Reagan came back and became president of the United States, governor of California first. That's for sure. So how would you describe, Michael, how is the Kennedy government harassment similar to the Obama administration's use of the IRS to target critics? Well, they targeted my father. I mean, they, uh, they, my father was brought in, uh, had to testify. Um, IRS brought him in. I mean, they were doing so much of the same, the same things that, of course, the Obama administration's doing. The people were very fearful of that administration. And it was really happening through, uh, through Bobby Kennedy at the attorney general level. He was, he was the guy pulling the strings at that level. So uh, my father had to testify. I remember he was, uh, at one time he was, gosh, eight times he was president of the uh, Screen Actors Guild. In fact, he's the he was the president of Screen Actors Guild who uh, allows every actor in the world that hates conservatives and hates Ronald Reagan allows them to have residuals. Uh, he's the one that put that into place so that they can live, you know, forever and for always off their residuals if they have to. Well, l let me talk and take it from reruns and residuals to the here and now. Coming out of Hollywood, in in some way, being a child of Hollywood as well as a child of politics. This whole thing with Sony and uh, the hack job apparently by North Korea. Uh, a lot of folks have said the studios have just surrendered in the wake of this cyber attack. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, yeah they have. They, they have surrendered. I mean, who, who can stop somebody else, uh, maybe not a country, but somebody, you know, pretending to be a country to do the same thing with, with other movies and other studios down the line. You know, I tweeted yesterday at Reagan World, I said, North Korea won the Hollywood Wars without firing a shot. Do you think it's possible that Russia and Iran may have been involved as well? Oh, I don't know if Russia and Iran been involved. My gosh, we, how many movies have we done about, a rush, about Russia? And, you know, we never shut down a movie, shut down a studio because of it. So, no, I think this is, you know, as they say, a North Korea event if you will, even though they have support from China and other places on the planet. Um, I think this is a North Korea event, and, and they caved. And they caved because all the studios caved, because all the studios were calling Sony and saying, listen, don't put your movie out because we've got other movies coming out. Follow the money. Nobody wanted to lose money on Christmas Day. I'm going to go to a movie on Christmas Day. I'm going to see Unbroken on Christmas Day. It's a true story, and it's a great story. But other studios were calling Sony at the same time, pull it off the shelves. We don't want to lose money on Christmas Day. 
when we put our movies in the theater. So this is all about follow the money. Fair enough. Hmm. Michael Reagan. We can follow Michael at Twitter, his handle at Reagan World. Merry Christmas, Michael. America's Forum continues after this.